There are a lot of scams in the watch industry. There is no doubt. From timepiece gentlemen to Phillips Auction House, there is no doubt. This? No, I'm still on this. There is. N- <laughs> Listen, carbon fiber is among the worst scams in the watch industry. Th- this industry has tricked you into believing that this that this material is good. And let me tell you something: it's grossly overrated. I disagree. Because you're an idiot. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. My name is Sam, and today's episode is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Can't wait to talk more about Bespoke Post later. Uh, Today, we're talking about things that are overrated in the watch industry, and I've got some strong opinions. You know what's not overrated? What? This tequila. This Electrico tequila is not overrated. Again, this isn't a sponsor. We're just, Sam and I are just very, we're just very lucky to like, we just, we're enjoying, we're enjoying these episodes and we're enjoying them because of Electrico Tequila. It's the only <laughs> mezcal that I'll drink. Um, but and it's actually not a sponsor. Not the point. The point is that there are a lot of scams in the watch industry uh, because there's a lot of money in scamming. There's a lot of money in convincing people that something is good um, and uh, that and, and that like period. Like there's a lot of money in convincing people that something is good, mm-hmm. right? Um, whether or not it is good. Okay, and I think that carbon fiber is a pretty good example of of a trend in watches that is not nearly as good as uh, or as good as its prices are high. Okay, period. Uh, let's talk about carbon fiber and in context with other metals. Okay, now I will be fair. Let me hear. I will say that carbon fiber simply ain't my jam. So it is probably fair to say that I'm a little bit biased, right? Like, like get out. Get out of here, right? Like, I am more of a, you know, I, I like the, the mahogany of a Riva boat. I like the natural saddle level leather of a vintage Berlinetta. Okay, you know, I like uh, I like the bamboo handles on vintage Gucci. The the style, my style, the things that I like are a little bit more, um, you know, decadent and and traditionally rich and you know, uh, I think classy. Simply put, for those who do not speak Christian, you're a gold snob. I'm a gold snob. <laughs> I'm a gold snob. Not a gold schnob, a gold snob. I'm, I, I, yeah, I've actually never had gold schnobs. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, but anyway. I'm a little bit of a gold snob. <laughs> I like that aesthetic. I, I just I just like that. I like a vintage paddock, okay? So I understand that because I'm a vintage paddock guy, I'm probably inherently not a carbon mm-hmm. fiber guy. So we're going to be fair in today's conversation and admit my bias, and we're going to talk about the the, the pros of carbon fiber, and then kind of kind of at the end, kind of like talk about is this just a marketing trick? Today's episode is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Which I absolutely love. So Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's it's completely free to join and you can skip any month or cancel any time. What's so great is that Bespoke Post every month will introduce their members to just awesome, cool products, uh, outdoor gear, barware, homeware, kitchen goods, clothing, and so much more, all based on a preference quiz that they fill out by developing your profile. Every Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you a fraction of that value. We just got the Terra box here, which is <laughs> awesome. I mean, not only did it, I mean, this is honestly a really neat little it's field a cool watch. It's little Columbia watch, 100%. Yeah. It looks like blue ceramic. Uh, obviously, it's it's, a, it's an approachable right plastic yes, piece, of course. I love this piece. And this, <laughs> this, this is, is awesome. awesome. I, I, this is the thing that I would have looked at online time and time again. This is a tabletop fireplace, right? Imagine how cool it would be, right, to go home, like, up a scotch right with a buddy and he's like what are you doing and you're like no nothing nothing and then two minutes later you've got your tabletop fireplace uh, that, that is so i should put marshmallows no, that'd be great why is everything back with the marshmallows oh because i'm hungry <laughs> and you and you stole this from the box as well <laughs> yes, immediately. I did. tell me what it is uh, this is a versa blanket which is great if you go camping either uh actually in the woods or if you just go in your car even on game day get your 
little uh, tabletop stove. I think put the game on, a little scotch. Game day. I mean, even right outside, right watching, uh, you know, children's sports and stuff like that. I mean, again, we, we, we love all of this. <laughs> it's just that, you know, so much of the shopping experience um, is, right, is, is guesswork, right? Mm-hmm. So Bespoke Post takes that out of it for you, right? Bespoke Post has a curated collection of incredible items, 90% of which, by the way, are made right here in the United States of America. And, uh, and, and they curate them for you, tailor them to you through your profile, and then every month they send you a box. But they're not just sending you a random box of things that you may or may not want. They'll tell you in advance what mm-hmm. they're going to send, and then you can choose to accept or pass. But let me tell you, the, the boxes, looking through them again, we got the Terra. It is a no-brainer. This is, this is so curated. It's so cool. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Bespoke Post. I know we got the Terra, which we love, but there are other boxes here that are just awesome. I mean, I know I'm looking at the at the Forge box, which has this incredible Damascus steel knife, which is made by Buck and Bear Knives in Pennsylvania, a company that I never would have found otherwise, right? But because Bespoke Post has such a network of amazing brands, they've introduced me to it. So I think the Forge box might be my next. So for 20% off of your first box of awesome, head down below to the link in the description and use the code TNH20. That's bespokepost.com slash TNH20. Bespoke Post is going to bring a smile to your face, certainly. Lay it out for me. What are some of the pros of carbon fiber? I got my list right here, ready Let's to talk go. about it. Couple of the pros. First off, cheers, bud. Here's to you, pal. And before we get in, what, what's on your wrist? What are you wearing today? I'm wearing my white gold reverse. So this Bye. is not made of carbon fiber. <laughs> it's much heavier. It's much softer, and I think it's far more timeless. I think carbon fiber is not timeless. <laughs> I just love that watch. I am wearing my uh, my Datejust that I actually bought from you, and I actually have it on a, are we going to call this plum dark purple? Yes. This yeah. is a, a plum alligator strap, which is in the Theo and Harris watch shop right now. Yes. I think we're calling this the Rubble. Uh, it's an incredible vintage. You know why we're calling it the Rubble? Why? Do you watch, I'm confused. Watch Ocean's Eleven? Yes. Okay. When when you know when uh, 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 Basher uh, is is addressing the fact that there's a problem with the uh, electrical grid. Yes. He goes, you know, uh, you know, w- w- we're not in Reno. We're in Barney. Barney being purple. Then what did what'd you say? Barney. Barney Rubble. Trouble. Gotcha. So I don't want to name it Barney because that's a little on the nose. So I named it Rubble Clever. because I like it's that. adjacent to Barney. I like that. If we're not um, in Reno. We're in Barney. This is my first strap that I've ever gotten from you. Yep. Um, it, it feels great. First Again, what I, what I love about straps in general is is you can really change any watch that you have into five, six, seven different looks. <laughs> uh, and the other thing that I will just add and, and shameless plug to the shop is uh, I think that these are great uh, Christmas gifts, yep. uh, especially with the holidays around the corner great stocking stuffers to the watch lover in the family yep. uh, or to any friends that you have. So so go down to the Theo and Harris watch shop and pick up some straps. I definitely, Maybe a watch. Uh, uh, straps completely change the watch game. So let's get into this. Okay. Anyway, um, back why, to- Why are carbon fiber watches objectively interesting? So ultra light. Right. Almost unbreakable. Right. Which is an interesting, because I have a story that kind of contradicts that, which we'll get into in a second. Right. Um, they're, they're, they're scratch resistant. Um, they have interesting structure. Uh, they're not prone to corrosion. Carbon fiber watches are three times stronger than titanium and 50% lighter than titanium watches. Wow. Which is very interesting, I think. As, as kind of a lay, like a lay person in this field, someone that doesn't really do alternative metals, I do precious metals. Uh, and I mean that. I'm not just making a joke. No, you're being Stop serious. laughing. Uh, <laughs> you can. know, I, I always put titanium and carbon fiber in the same world. Really? Right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of, of I, I wouldn't wear a titanium watch. It's not my jam. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I recommend them all the time. I think that Tag Heuer's uh, Solograph, uh, this, you know, yeah. basically solar-powered aqua racer, I think is an amazing watch in titanium. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of my, my distaste for titanium really comes down to the aesthetic. Okay, that's fair. Now, there are a couple of watches we're talking about here. I think a really good example is the Zenith Defy in, tit- in carbon fiber. Mm-hmm. I think that Audemars Piguet has made a couple of Royal Oak offshores mm-hmm. in carbon fiber. I think that 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 uh, that uh, uh, Doxa has done a good job with I their just carbon love the colors fibers. Of this. And I think that I think that Octo. Bulgari's uh, new Octofinissimo in 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 carbon fiber, uh, or you know, carbon gold as they're calling mm-hmm. it, is is really neat. I'm a big big Octofinissimo fan. I think it's one of the 
most interesting watches of the last 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, or frankly, even longer. So uh, probably, probably, actually, I would say definitely longer. 20 years puts us into the 90s. The 90s weren't the best era. So I would say one <laughs> of the greatest watches of the last 40 or 50 years. I really mean that. So I can understand that, that carbon fiber is certainly something that brands are tempted to experiment with. I get that. I get that as a brand or as an individual or as a, as a genius, right? So these yep. people that are behind these watches are geniuses. They're tempted to say, I'll try my hand at that new technology. I'll try my hand at, 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 at introducing this material into this brilliant watch. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, uh, I, I think that, you know, it, I don't know if carbon fiber is here to stay. I, I don't know. I know this is, is this is a fairly newer technology into the watch field. Right. Um, what I do appreciate about these watches, what I do like is, is again, it, it, it's interesting because we'll tell the story in a second, but being that these are supposed to be stronger watches, they're lighter. To me, it's almost reminiscent of, of what a, a carbon fiber watch should be. It's almost like a, a field watch. Like you, This is something that you should be able to take. It's scratch resistant. You should take this out in the wilderness. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if people are utilizing them like that. I'll be honest, and, and I think you agree with me. When I think of a dress watch, no, carbon fiber does not come to mind. I'm not saying that you can't dress these watches up, but if I was wearing a suit, it would not be my first choice. I would go even further. I would go as far as to say that it's almost too military adjacent and reminiscent for a civilian to wear. Interesting. Okay. I think it's just like all black camo. I think that it's just like, again, I'm obviously being dramatic and saying <laughs> that a civilian can't wear a carbon fiber watch. I obviously don't mean that. But for me, it's a little bit close. I mean, that pattern is just so associated, right? This kind of like, you know, camouflage pattern is so associated mm -hmm. with, with the military that I think that A, it's a, it's a phenomenal watch for, for someone that Serves in the military, yeah, uh, and I think that I think it's you know a lot of the guys you know go and get subs and subs are great, but I think that the carbon fiber uh, zenith I think is a more logical like offering. Yep. I think the sub is kind of antithetical. I think that if you're in the military and you're going to wear your watch, I think that a sub is a little bit more of a piece of jewelry. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't screw with it. That being said, I think that the, the, the Zenith is a good example. The Doxa is a good example. I mean, these are watches that literally fit their wardrobes perfectly. Yeah. Uh, and again, I know I'm being a little bit, maybe that's a little bit much to say that, you know, these are decidedly militant, but I do feel that way. I, I, I get where you're coming from. I, I disagree. I, I The Doxa, as a prime example, is... Uh, out of the watch that we're talking about yeah. is kind of my favorite, obviously loving the color. And these are the under four thousand dollars. Are under four thousand dollars, but yep. I would get the Doxa, and, and not that I've gone hiking, but if I ever started picking up hiking, or like when I would go for a walk, maybe I'm going to wear my Doxa. Uh, that's how I would envision that watch. That's when I would wear that watch. I don't think that I would get more than one carbon fiber watch in in my collection. But if I were to purchase one, um, I'd really go the Doxa route. What's kind of funny is you know, I don't know if Sam know, if Sam knows this, but you but you're you're dead on, right? Like like the Dox is a dive watch. The Dox yeah. is decidedly a dive watch. It's like got dive history with Jacques, yes. you know, Cousteau and everything. But yet, uh, uh, it's become just kind of like a general sports watch, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't know any, like I I don't know anyone that dives. Like I'm sure I know someone that dives, but not really. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really become like a sub alternative. Oh my God! Wow, I'm really proving the point. The sub is no longer a dive watch. <laughs> like, it's just kind of like it's just kind of like a sports watch. Period. You know, uh, it's it's not dive. It's just supposed to be resilient to the. Or resistant to the elements. Yes. And also, you know, while we're on the topic of, of carbon fiber watches and why I, I like the idea of, of the Doxa is, is G-Shock actually makes a carbon fiber watch. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting. It, it, it's really cool. Uh, but I believe it's it's about $1,000, 900 yeah. and something. I'd rather spend the extra money at the Doxa. Yeah. Uh, I feel like for a Casio, I'd, I'd, I'd like to stay in that. And I said this with Michael recently on an episode that, that I think will launch. Um, but I think if you're spending for a Casio, you should stay sub 250, 300. Um, so to me, to spend on a carbon fiber watch, I wouldn't do it. But but the Doxa, I think, is a great alternative. And again, yeah. I think that's a watch that you can, you can have fun with. Almost how I look at a Timex, I look at the Doxa. And, and you can really go out and... Air quotes on explore, because yeah. where am I going? Right. But I'm gonna yeah, maybe I'm gonna pick up hiking now. I don't know. I'm gonna get Doxa for it. There are two real values, and then there's a third value that I think is the real value. Mm -hmm. Right? It's 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 lighter and it's tougher than titanium. Yes. Right? Uh, I think that the third variable is that it's just funny looking. 
I think people like it because it's funny looking. And I think that there's definitely a group of people that do like it uh, because it's, you know, uh, lighter and, and tougher. I think mm-hmm. more because it's lighter. I think that tougher is brand speak. I don't think that tougher is something you experience. I don't think that people wearing the Zenith, or people wearing the AP, or people wearing the Doxa will ever actually realize that it's tougher. I do think that it's possible they could notice it's lighter. Titanium is also already very light, yes. so I actually don't know if you can even notice that it's that much lighter <laughs> than titanium. I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. How noticeable is that? Especially like I don't know. Head only. I don't even know. Uh, that being said, I think the big difference is just the aesthetic. There are a couple ways to show this material. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess I like the 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 more fluid natural as opposed to the weaved side. I mean, better. But either way, it's for me. It's too busy. For me, it's too sporty. For me, it's too militant. I don't like it. And 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 I think that my grander point is carbon fiber is antithetical. The the popularization of carbon fiber is totally antithetical to the because it's new. Mm-hmm. It's invented in the 2000s, right? I think it undermines what we know the universal, you know, historical truth about gold is, right? Gold is good. Gold is worth something, okay? Gold is heavy, gold is shiny, and gold is soft. Mm-hmm. And you're going to tell me that this new thing that is light, dull, and hard is worth a lot of money? Maybe to some people that are interested in technological advancements, people that are really smart, to some people, sure, I could believe that. Mm -hmm. But I think to everyone else, you're selling marketing and you're selling a bag of goods. Whether you're a Submariner guy or a 50 Fathoms guy or a Day Date guy or or an FP Jorn guy, you've got to just take a step back and appreciate this history here. This isn't stuff you're going to find in a you know in a showcase. This is not mass-produced stuff, which is beautiful in its own right. I mean, this is treasure hunting. So, so let's talk about why carbon actually is as expensive as it is, because there are a few cons to carbon uh, fiber watches, which which cause it to be expensive. Number one, um, the process is extremely complex in watches. I believe so that. So one of the things that I was reading is that apparently with, with cars, carbon fiber is very easy to use. They, they have it down pat. Watches, they're not there yet. The, the technology is there. They're able to do it. There's a high rejection rate with these watches. So a lot of the ones that, that do come out uh, do get thrown away. I don't know what that percent is, but apparently from what I've read, uh, definitely higher than what you might see with with maybe gold or silver. Right. Uh, the other thing is the, to create the carbon fiber watches. It does take a lot of wear and tear for the machinery to create it. Got it. So you're going through machinery quicker. Got it. And then the last thing that's kind of just an, an interesting point. I know that this this you know these carbon fiber watches are scratch resistant. Apparently very hard to break. Uh, but if you do scratch it, you cannot polish or refinish these watches. So if you do scratch it, that is it. You're, you. You made your mark with your How watch. How do you feel about that? So I don't know. Part of me likes that. Part of me hates that. I, I enjoy the fact of, of, of scratching a watch and, and kind of making it your own, wearing it in. If I did scratch my Rolex, for example, um, to an extent, depending on the size of the scratch and, and the depth of it, um, I'd be happy with that. I, I think that that's me wearing my watch. And when I pass it on, I get to tell that story of how I scratched that watch. And mm-hmm. odds are, it'd probably be just me drunk at a bar and right. I hit it on something. Right. But I like the idea that I, I could get this refinished. Right. Worst case, I like having that option. Now you have a fallback. You don't have the safety here. Yeah. So it's like now you just got to buy a new watch. Yeah. Uh, I don't love that aspect, especially yeah. when, to your point, these are expensive watches. Yeah. I get why they're charging as much. Well, one, one thing that that I, I I do enjoy about about carbon fiber watches because these are. Sp- relatively speaking, so new to the watch industry, I'm curious where these go 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious where they start using them, how they start, how they start creating them. Right now, it seems to just be very, as your point, uh, to your point, very, very militant in how they're, they're being created. I happen to enjoy that. All the reasons that you don't like these watches, yeah. I actually like them for that. I think that it gives it a uniqueness. Um, I think that, you know, um, to your point, you know, you, you kind of have to be a badass in a sense to, yeah. to pull it off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I could. I think the Docs is a, a much more uh, uh, 
funnier uh, showing of that that is easier to wear. Um, but I, I do enjoy these watches, and I think that I enjoy the, the technology advancements that we're seeing now with watches. Yeah. I think it adds to, to kind of what's the come. I definitely agree with that. Like, I think that sapphire is a really interesting yeah. material that, that, that people use, specifically like Hublot. I think that and that ceramic is kind of cool. I, I'm kind of anti the pattern of carbon fiber. That's fair. Like, you know, I, I, I don't think I'd buy a ceramic watch. And I know that Michael likes white ceramic, and I don't. Um, but I think that AP's done a great job with ceramic. Black, white, blue. This is amazing. No. I, I like their blue ceramic AP per, uh, Perpetual. I think it's a cool watch. I think it's, it's super expensive and, and wildly overpriced in the secondary market. But <laughs> I think it's a cool watch. Um, but I just don't like the pattern. I, I, that, that, that's that's essentially it. That's fair. But if you look at my watch collection, that's consistent, <laughs> right? Like, you know, I don't wear watches that have like any sort of my my, my most sporty watch is a is a GMT. Which happens to be precious. Right. Oh. Like, that's not very sporty. No. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, one point off topic before we touch on ceramics, I do have a few pros and cons as well. Uh, one quick story. I was actually talking to Michael before we recorded this. And uh, for, for the viewers who may not know, Michael did sell his Zenith uh, Defy. Yeah. Sold it to a friend of his. And I believe that the friend had it on for, for a week, if that. And uh, the band broke. <laughs> He was skiing, right? Oh, well, I didn't get that part of the story. Yeah. You know more than I so do. So he was skiing, I believe, and the band broke and <laughs> lost the watch. And I believe went back into the mountain and found it. <laughs> That's um, great. Real bad luck. You know what I can almost guarantee you? Tell me. A yellow gold day date wouldn't have fallen <laughs> off his wrist. Period. And I really feel that way. I, and I that. know that gold is softer, blah, 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 blah. But I think, you know, it, it, just, it just wouldn't have it just wouldn't have happened. I've never heard of that happening. Look at look at Jack Nicholas, right? Famous, <laughs> famous golfer, okay? Uh auctioned off his day date a couple of years ago at Phillips Auction House. Okay. And the man auctioned off a, an 1803 reference day date, yellow gold, champagne dial. And the watch had been worn. This, now, golfers are not combat athletes in the same way that, you know, or combat, right, people, like hard living people mm -hmm. in the same way like a Mason would be. A Mason's going to beat up his watch worse than a golfer, in yes. theory. Now, on a shock level, maybe not, right? Like, on a shock level, golfers put their watches through hell. Like, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But there are, like, you know, if, if you were to have worn a watch through playing hockey for a whole career, yeah. not that you can wear a watch through hockey, but that would, right, that would be worse. That being said, he wore the hell out of his day date. And, yeah, it's a heavy Soft metal. And it lasted. Guess what? It lasted since the 60s. And I think that's pretty neat. It's very cool. You know, I just don't. I think that that's good enough. I don't think we that's need fair. a harder, lighter metal. I don't think that we need to undermine the, the things that we fundamentally value as, as humans, right? Interesting. Like, okay. I, I, you know, I think that there are certain things that are genetically wired into us that are not just social. Yeah, there's a social, there's a huge social, social influence on why we value gold, mm -hmm. for sure. But I think that it's fundamentally human. I think that we would. I think that we would refine that on any island if our civilization restarted. I think that we, as people, um, just the same way that we are going to ultimately develop language because we are inclined to communicate and we are intelligent. I think that we are inclined to gravitate toward gold and not carbon fiber. I think that logic. Ultimately, as a tool, is the undoing of us all, right? And that, like, science, like, can mm -hmm. push us, which is amazing. God knows, but, but, you know, I think that it, 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 it's never going to change, right? The fact that carbon fiber may or like may be difficult to make yeah. is never going to change the fact that the masses, people as a whole, will always prefer gold. Now, that doesn't mean they shouldn't make carbon fiber. God knows. We, as a watch community, we should be manufacturing or we should be supporting the manufacture of all different yeah. diverse right sets of materials and we should buy them because that encourages brands to experiment more. I believe in that completely, mm -hmm. right? Like if you buy carbon fiber, that means that Zenith is going to be more inclined to manufacture something out of, you know, bronze or out of sapphire or out of whatever material. God knows what's going to happen down the road, right? Like Oris released a watch a couple of weeks ago that was, you know, laser etched like rainbow dial. That wouldn't have happened. 10 years ago, right? That was, yeah, a market release, but that was a compliment to to the watch community for being daring. Oris wouldn't be just putting their money on the line if they didn't have reason to believe the watch community was open enough to 
give them the money back plus mm-hmm. profit, right? So I'm all about buying carbon fiber, and that's great. I just think it's great for a, a fairly small percentage of the of, of the population. That's it. Do I think that it's a little expensive? I do. I, I do think it's a little pricey. Do I like it? No. If my dad bought it, I would definitely sell it when he died. Gotcha. Right, a, 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 barring some scenario when my dad developed a really deep connection with this carbon fiber watch, <laughs> which I highly doubt, by the way. I don't know. I would say that there's a, uh, I guess, like most watches. Few and far between have a really, really deep connection, right, so far as a mass market. Right? Mm-hmm. If you're a real watch guy, you definitely do, or you're more likely to. But, you know, I think that carbon fiber is neat, and I'm not saying it's not a feat of technology, but what I am saying is I think it probably fits in cars better than it does in watches and mass. And mass. Interesting. Right? And there are a larger population of car guys or, or, or watch guys that would prefer carbon fiber in their car, right? It's just contextual. It's native in the car world. But it's been used for so much longer, which is why I'm interested to see in 10, 20 years where carbon fiber and watches but I think end up. But I think it's larger than that. I don't think it's just precedent. I think that we associate our cars mm-hmm. with sportiness and, and, and speed, and speed requires- But aren't watches considered sportiness? N- 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 well, wait. The cars, fast cars, also that's a, it's a balance between weight. Mm-hmm. So carbon fiber is also like kind of it's kind of like it's kind of like masculine because it's light and that makes you go faster. It's like a thing. It gotcha. looks fast. Okay. okay. Uh, how sporty is the sub these days? Even a Tudor Black yeah. Bay, which is a sports watch, and it's sporty compared to the Submariner. It's still not the Tudor. Submariners of of, 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 of of bygone era, right? Like all sports watches or the vast majority of sports watches are jewelry. And that's not by happenstance. That's because the market wanted it to go that way. That's why Genta worked, right? Because mm-hmm. he understood I can make you feel masculine, but still like kind of, it's kind of still delicate and there's a juxtaposition and it's kind of still rich because there's no functionality to being light. In cars, there is, right? That then poses my next question. Are carbon fiber watches the new sport watches? Mm-mm. No? No. Oh, you mean oh you mean in a real way. Yeah, no, I'm being serious. Yeah. Oh, oh not, does, not are in these, mass. No, not in mass. Like, like, all right, like you just said, the submariner is more of a, a, a jewelry piece than a sports watch. A diver, you know, majority of divers that are now being made are, are yeah. more of a, a, a jewelry piece than they are actually being worn it's, for diving. So are, this, are, are, are carbon fiber watches the new breed of sports it's watches? A, it's a terrific question. So so here's the answer. Okay, here's Let the answer. Let me hear answer. it. Everyone knows that if, if Rolex were to supply a watch to, to, to achieve an accomplishment like the summit of Mount Everest mm-hmm. today, they wouldn't supply a standard Rolex Explorer. That is... That is not as much of a jewelry piece as the sub, but it's become a bit of a jewelry piece, mm-hmm. right? Relatively speaking. They would supply something that was more technologically advanced to better suit that explorer. Mm-hmm. The same way that Vacheron Constantin did with Corey Richards, okay? That was a titanium watch, mm-hmm. okay, uh, uh, with a canvas strap, okay? I think that there is an interesting conversation to be had on a technological level mm-hmm. if Rolex would do a titanium explorer on a canvas strap, or if they would do a carbon fiber explorer interesting. on a canvas strap. That's an interesting question. Yeah. And I'm open to that conversation. Um, but I, 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 don't, I don't see the application on bracelet. Uh, again, w- w- I'm not a scientist. I don't know what I'm talking about. I- I'm opening up the question, right? And that's like that is me saying, hey, guys, I have reached the bounds of my expertise. Mm-hmm. I, I no longer think that my opinion is worth listening to after this. <laughs> um, but I'm interested to understand what... Rolex, what would their Explorer be? The same way that Vacheron, when put to the test, didn't just send Corey Richards with a regular overseas. They sent him with not only a dual time, but a titanium dual time. Right? Like, that's interesting to me. Interesting. I wonder what Rolex would do. And, and, and would, do you think that your thought process would change if the finish for the carbon fiber watches wasn't as military-esque, as, as textured, if it was more, For sure. not basic, but but standard. For sure. I mean, listen, Black, I, gray, I'm, 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 I'm warmer to titanium than I am to carbon fiber. Okay. So th- and then the only reason there is because of 
the lack of texture of titanium. And I still wouldn't buy a titanium watch. Like, it's still not me. I'm not going to do no. that. Um, you, you know, period. That being said, if my, you know, if my son, if I ever had a son, was, you know, joining, you know, I don't know, the Navy or something, <laughs> would I, and I was chose, I, I had the opportunity to give him a stainless steel Submariner or a titanium Submariner on a NATO strap, Ooh. you better bet I'm giving him a titanium Na uh, Submariner or NATO strap, right? Ooh. Period. And, and I'd pay a premium for it. Yeah. Right? I think it's more interesting. I think it's more, I think it's just, and I think it's more apropos. I think, I think it's more today. I think that modern Submariner is a jewelry piece. Nothing wrong with that. God knows. It's just a sign of, a sign of, hey, I, hey, mom, I made it. It's not. It's not. Hey, I'm about to go. You know, uh, save the world again w w with carbon fiber. What I'm again, as I've mentioned before, what I'm curious to see is it, as this technology progresses, as more watch companies either or either start making more of these or, or less. But if they start making more, I'm curious as they nail down um, the 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 process of it. Does the price come down a little bit? And then also, you know, what? How creative are they able to get? And that's where I, I really want to see carbon fiber in five years. Like I'd love to revisit this conversation in five, ten years. For sure. I definitely agree with that. I mean, I'm, I, yeah, yes, I agree with you there. I'm definitely Because it's just interested. starting in, in, yeah. in my mind. I agree with that. It's a new material in the grand scheme of the world, and mm -hmm. it's definitely a new material in watches. And I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going. And um, and yeah, I mean, again, I don't think I'll ever love it uh, <laughs> because of the- because This is not precious metal? Uh, yeah, well, that too, right? Like, again, I've staked, I, I, I truly- I've claimed my stake. When I talk about almost- You're dying on this hill. Politics, whatever, I always talk about- <laughs> About fun, what I understand to be fundamental, like human tendencies, and I think that that as humans we are more likely to to always stay beside something that is shinier, heavier, and softer. And if it's not shinier, it's still heavier. And when I say softer, I mean that as a concession. We don't care that it's soft. It's fine. Hmm. It's fine. We'll just weld more on top of it. <laughs> That's fine because it's cool that it's heavy. That's it. You could you could brush platinum yeah. and you're still going to wear it and be like, wow, yeah, I, I feel rich. Even if titanium was more expensive, I think you'd put it on and be like, so the expert's telling me this is supposed to feel good? <laughs> this isn't supposed to feel cheap, right? This, wow, I'm interested in that, right? Like, I just look like that, you know, but... but <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that, like, like just got that. you don't, some things need no explanation. That's fair. And I don't think gold needs an explanation. I think it appeals to our fundamental, you know, tendencies as human beings. I think that carbon fiber and titanium appeal more to our logic and mm -hmm. our intelligence. And I don't, I, and frankly, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to things in the world. I, I love, I love I love the world. I love America. I love the world. I am reluctant to make bets on the general intelligence of people, though. I get where you're I'm from. an optimistic citizen of the world. I love God. I could go on for an hour about this, but we are very easily tricked. So, okay. By smarter people. I think that... <laughs> like the people that make carbon fiber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then the last thing that I, I will talk about, we mentioned ceramic. Uh, and actually, ceramic... I. Purchase carbon fiber over ceramic. Perpetual. I love what what AP has done with their perpetual and, and their uh, uh, ceramic. Yeah. Uh, the open works great too. Yeah. The white is just beautiful. The blue is also beautiful. Uh, a couple pros and cons about ceramic. While we're on the topic, um, number one, it's it's got a rich, deep shine. Um, it's highly scratch resistant. Um, it's light, comfortable watch. Mm -hmm. I've never put one on, but. That's what the experts are telling me. That's yeah. what the internet's telling me. And, and of course, I believe everything that I read on the internet. Yep. Uh, and then as some of the cons of ceramic and why I don't see myself pulling the trigger on a ceramic watch. Um, again, similar to carbon fiber, this is highly expensive due to wear and tear of machinery tools. Uh, there's a need to purchase a di an additional surplus when you are manufacturing these watches, uh, roughly from what I've read, 30% additional Got from it. what you expect to make because you are just going to have uh, um, just just lost uh, watches in, in that production process. Uh, and because then, you're not melting it again, right? Whereas gold, right? You're probably repurposing. I mean, you probably can, stuff. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then also, uh, so you're you're correcting for for defective pieces. And then lastly, uh, it's not resistant to shattering, which scares it's rather me. brittle. Yeah, it's very brittle. Yeah. Uh, and when you're spending uh, on a on a white. Uh, <laughs> 
the Royal Oak, you know, $300,000. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you could shatter this if you drop it on a ceramic or wood floor yeah. uh, from a couple feet uh, scares the shit out of me. That actually happened on Instagram pretty recently. A famous collector named Eric Koo dropped his, I, I think it was an open work. I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, I don't really, I really don't know what AP was, but black AP ceramic. He dropped it uh, from, I would say, four feet. He's a really short guy, so it had to be maybe two feet. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just kidding. Not going to make my short uh, joke about you. <laughs> uh, and um, and yeah, like uh, he, he kind of took it in, in good, you know, kind of good humor because that's the kind of guy he is on Instagram. He's like this great wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And he kind of, so f- you know funny or whatever, lighthearted, I suppose, um, guy was just like, I guess I need to get another link now. The whole watch didn't break, but links broke. It, it, maybe one or more links broke. Yeah, what do you think so one of those links it? Like, oh, it's a fortune. I, I, I'm, listen, I can guarantee you if he saw the end of this video and someone tagged him, he'll tell you exactly what the link costs. Gotcha. Like, he'll be like, oh, no, for educational purposes, <laughs> that link was $4,000, just so you know. I, me dropping that cost me $4,000. Yeah, that's what scares the shit. You know what, right now? He's probably laughing, like being like 4000 He's so poor. It was a <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, hey, that's that's life. Um, that's that's all I have to say about ceramic. I know that well, you you enjoy them. I think today was an interesting conversation in in metals. I hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation. If you liked the video, go ahead and like it. And uh, obviously, if you if you want to see more content from Theo and Harris, go ahead and subscribe to our podcast mm-hmm. at the Zero. Link is down below. We have private conversations with our fans mm-hmm. all the time and release exclusive content. And it's an amazing place. If you do join the Zero, um, shoot me a DM there, and I could I could talk to you for a little while. I'd love to talk about watches. I'd, I'd really love that. I can't answer all people on YouTube. There are just too many of you. But the folks on the Zero, um, I do I, I do engage with them and I get to their comments and their questions and it's, it's the best. So I hope that you uh, join the Zero, even on a seven-day free trial. I hope to see you on over there. If you love watches like I do, if you think that they mean something more than the time, then head on over to theoandharris.com and shop our selection of vintage watches and handmade straps. They're unique and they're special, and once they're gone, they're gone for good.